I recently saw a couple of headlines saying that a group of microbiologists discovered a protein that spontaneously folds into a fractal. I'll admit that I was a bit jealous because we don't get pretty stuff like this in physics. Except I just learned last week we do. Look at this! That's a spontaneously formed fractal made of single atoms. And it doesn't just look nice. This could become the basis of a new type of quantum computing at room temperature. Let's have a look. The shape that you just saw in this protein and atom layer is known as the Sierpinski triangle. You get that by taking a triangle, dividing it into four smaller triangles and chucking out the middle one. Then you repeat this for the three triangles you didn't throw out and repeat and repeat. Technically, you'd have to repeat this infinitely many times to get a true fractal. In nature, a fractal never has infinitely many repetitions. They have a large and smallest scale and in between you have this self-similarity. It's just like asking your kids to clean their room feels like an infinite repetition but eventually the heat death of the universe will take care of it. Let's then have a look at those atomic fractals. What you see here are images taken by a scanning electron microscope. They created these fractals by depositing bismuth atoms on the surface of indium antimonide with a specific crystal structure. The bismuth then spontaneously forms these fractals. It's amazing, really. This assembly seems to be driven by spin-orbit couplings and triggered by the underlying crystal letters, but they don't know exactly how it comes about. Actually, this isn't new. It turns out a group of Chinese physicists found this already in 2017. I just hadn't heard of it. Or maybe I did, but I forgot. Don't blame me too much, please. I've probably forgotten more than you've ever known won't be long and I'm fit to run for president. What's new is that another group now measured the properties of these microfractals and they confirmed that they're topological insulators. Topological insulators won the Physics Nobel Prize in 2016. They're materials which are insulators in the bulk but conduct at the surface. They're not superconductors but they have very stable ground states and those can have quantum properties. That makes them interesting for electronic applications, especially quantum computing. But the issue is that so far topological insulators have all required either a high magnetic field or extremely low temperatures. It's basically the same problem as with superconductors. Interesting in principle, but in practice you only get them under extreme conditions, which makes them difficult and expensive to use. In the new paper they now demonstrate that these atomic fractals are topological insulators that conduct only at the edges and that they do this at room temperature without a magnetic field. This is extremely interesting because that means that if you put a current on the edges of these things then that creates a basically noiseless quantum state which you can then use for quantum computing. More specifically you would use it for topological quantum computing. If you remember that's the thing that Microsoft tried to get running then had a paper retracted and then Google came out of the blue saying they could do it better. The big deal about topological quantum computing is that topological quantum states are much, much easier to protect from noise. But so far the topological qubits were all still cooled down to just above zero. So these tiny atomic fractals could be what makes topological quantum computing work. As you probably know, fractals are characterized by a dimension that's not an integer. So what's the dimension of those atomic fractals? The idea to give fractals a dimension comes from the following. If you take a line of length one and and you scale that up by a factor two, how much line do you have? Well, twice as much. If you take a square of area one and you scale that up by a factor two, you have four times as much. If you take a cube, the volume increases by a factor eight. Generally, you can calculate the dimension of these shapes by asking if you increase the scale, how much does the shape change? You measure the growth in units that we can call n, the factor f, and the dimension d, that is what we put into the exponent. So n equals f to the dth 
power. For our example, the factor f was 2. For the line, n was also 2. So for the line, we have d equals 1. For the square, n was 4, so d equals 2. And for the cube, d equals 3, as you expect. For a fractal now, you count the growth per iteration. For the Sierpinski triangle, for example, if you decrease the size of the triangle by a factor 2, then the area increases by a factor 3 not as you would expect 4. So we have 2 to the d equals 3, or d is the logarithm of 3 divided by the logarithm of 2, which gives the dimension of approximately 1.58. What all of this means is that the future of quantum computing might lie in the 1.58th dimension, or maybe not. But then at least it'll give physicists something to brag about at parties. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn, and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.